Oh yeah, it's Maximum Exposure. <laughs> the planet's only show that brings you stuff like this. Man hits bear, bear gets mad, bear gets even. An alligator gets ahead. A killing machine. And a death spiral. A killer whale kills. It's open season on Hunters. A leopard hitches a ride on a guy's face. And really fat sea creatures rip each other raw to impress the chicks. And that's just a little taste. Tired of all those other wimpy critter shows? Yep. We call this one Animals Strike Back. Kenny Cypress is an alligator wrestler. Been messing with gators his whole life. He's a pro. Well, you be the judge. Kenny's gonna show his fans how to manhandle one of these 350-pound man-eaters. Step one, drag the gator around the ring by the tail to show him who's boss. Step two, wrench open that mouthful of razor-sharp teeth. Step three, stick your head in the mouth and yell down their throat, yo, your mama's a handbag. It's skull sandwich time. The gator has a death grip on Kenny's head. An assistant tries to save Kenny. A man hops the fence and tries to pry the gator off Kenny's head with a pole. More men join in the wrestling match, and they finally free Kenny from the bloodthirsty monster. Kenny's head's got more holes in it than Dennis Rodman's nipples. You know, I thought I was dead, and first thing that popped into my head. He's either going to say, teeth or my kids? We're my kids, and you know, I guess it pops into everybody's head when, they, when they're dying, they think of their kids. Hey, here's a slow motion look at that attack. Notice before Kenny sticks his head in the gator's jaws, he tries to wipe the sweat off his brow. Gators have very sensitive taste buds. Their jaws will stay open until something touches their tongue. Kenny missed a tiny drop of sweat. It's a salty sweat, and they don't like that taste at all. But they certainly do like the taste of human blood. So he didn't want to let go, and you know, he was about to let anybody take his food away. You can't keep a wrestler like Kenny out of the alligator pit. But he's changed his act. No more head in the jaw tricks. Now it's only hands. Heck, you got two of those. But you only got one head. Ain't that right, Kenny? The attack wasn't a total waste. While Kenny's head was deep inside the gator's mouth, he learned something about him he never knew. He breathed on me and I smelled bad breath. <laughs> It's time to play the game, Pick the Victim. Now, somebody in this New Jersey pub is going to be bitten by a boa constrictor. Will it be the Yaley, Mr. Happy Hour, Snake Hater, Sweet Little Baby, or the Snake Charmer? Let's roll the tape and find out. This is a birthday party for the boa brainchild of its owner, Rick Strip. The idea? Have a few drinks at Rick's and get your picture taken with his giant snake. Contestant number one, the Yaley. If you picked her, you're wrong. Contestant number two, Mr. Happy Hour. The snake flicks its tongue like he's gonna attack, but doesn't. It's on to contestant number three, the snake hater. The snake can taste her fear and inches towards her face. But he doesn't strike. We're on to contestant number four, sweet little baby. Oh, look, he's patting a boa. Isn't that the cutest thing? Now the snake moves right up to the baby's face. Could this be the winner? Whew, that ain't our victim. So we're down to our last contestant. The Snake Charmer. Here, you 
This doesn't look good. Snake is draped all over her, but seems strangely attracted to the owner. We've got a victim. It's the proud snake owner. And he's as surprised as we are. Let's slow it down. Our snake charmers all smiles, and so is Rick as he comes up behind her. Then, wham! It's fangs to the face, a vicious shot. Boy, that's a hell of a freaking ball, huh? After a moment, Richard spits. Let's blow up the image and see what's coming out of Richard's mouth. Those are some of the snake's teeth which punctured Richard's face during the attack. Surprise, everybody! Thanks for playing. Pick the victim. Boy, that's a hell of a freaking ball, huh? Howdy, all you bear lovers out there. Here's a little tip for you on how to avoid an attack from our friend Dick. First, don't keep him in cages. Second, don't ever go near him. Third, don't ever, ever, ever hit him with a stick. Here, Cubby. Here, Cubby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Look here. Once attacked, okay, the rules change. If you're not dead, then play dead. Bears still fall for that old trick. Come on, Next, baby. make sure a loved one is nearby. Come on. Preferably a calm loved one. Come on, baby. Look here. A calm loved one with an apple. Okay, get up, Dick. Not yet. Easy. He's going to need a little Deep that ever never happened before. I know. You okay? Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Yeah. Understatement of the year. Here's the attack in slow motion. Dick smacks the bear with a stick. And we got ourselves a brawl. The bear attacks with a vengeance and really messes up Dick's hair. We don't know exactly why the bear attacked, but it brings us to our last rule. Stay away from bears... Well, you'll end up like Dick. Here, Cubby. Now, why is this newscaster walking out of a sewage ditch with a big smile on his face? Is it A? He just found the winning lottery ticket he flushed down the toilet. B? He thinks smelling like human waste will help him with the ladies. Or C? He discovered that sewage has secret healing powers. Well, it's none of those. Here's the real reason. Oh. Newscaster Paul Shankman got shanked by a llama. The newscaster went to the zoo to do a story about llamas, and, well, he became the story. They kept telling me how friendly llamas are. Uh, I guess I got a, the bad seed. Oh. <laughs> Clearly, this is one llama who doesn't like publicity. Bring on Barbara Walters. If I ever meet him again, the fur is going to fly. Oh, Paul may want a rematch, but we're betting on the llama. What? Llamas all over the world are saying, what? Bring it on, dudes. What you doing? An American tourist is taking this llama at a zoo in Amsterdam. Hey, you. I don't think you should be doing this. This llama's trying to hey. tell this guy something. Hey, Check out that. the body language. Ears pulled back, bulging eyes, puppy cheeks. What's he saying? Well, this. <laughs> that pretty much ruined Merrill Christensen's vacation. Here's his exclusive video diary. That was the worst. The worst thing ever. I mean, to have basically what appeared to be and smell to be poop spit right in your face and I think I got some in my mouth I mean <laughs> yeah anyway horrible horrible this camera kind of hey. stinks now I don't know what to do about hey, that the attack of the llama slime cost Merrill 500 bucks to fix his camera it ruined his clothes and it changed his life forever that was probably the sickest most horrible experience I've ever, ever dealt with. Probably the worst thing that can happen to a human being. Hey, you get back. Coming up.
up next on Maximum Exposure. A leopard goes postal in a pickup. And a timid elephant gets the urge to kill. A lion gets hungry for a little teen jerky. And a deadly snake like totally bites. What evil lurks behind the door? And a killer whale gnaws on a human drumstick. If you think that rocks, don't miss our max X list of Animals Strike Back. Come on back to Max X. Welcome back to Max X. We got more animals striking back. Here's an unbelievable attack all the way from Africa. These park rangers caught this bloodthirsty leopard, which was terrorizing a local village. They're out in the middle of nowhere trying to release it back into the wild. But the leopard ain't leaving. Idea. Jab the cat with a branch and force him out. But the cat won't leave, and the poking continues. Finally, it works. But the leopard has some unfinished business before he goes. The ranger's window jams, and the leopard pounces on it. Finally, the leopard springs off into the wilderness, leaving a bloody park ranger behind. Here's that attack again. The leopard leaps through the open window and tears the ranger apart. We just can't say it enough. Don't mess with wildlife, because they'll mess you up real bad. It's feeding time for a herd of elephants at a game park outside San Diego, California. That's elephant handler David Sao Marcos dishing out the food. This hungry herd's crowding the gate just a little too much. David decides to move them back and calls out to another handler to help. Hey, Bob! Hey, look Suddenly, an elephant named Cindy charges. Dave scrambles out of the pen and tries to close the gate. Cindy smacks him with her trunk and Dave goes flying. Again in slow motion. Cindy hits him in the face with a vicious uppercut, and Dave goes sailing against the wall. Then she moves in for the kill. Cindy's trying to crush him with her feet and forehead. Cindy lets him live, and Dave manages to escape. Other trainers move in to help. It's with me, uh, it's with me for the rest of my life, Don't, that's for sure. I think about it every day. So, I'm just glad to be alive. Davey Boy quit the elephant business. He's now a stockbroker. If you ever want to get a racehorse really angry, pull a saddle strap around his groin real tight. And here's what happens. The more he bucks, the more he's in pain. And this angry mount's gonna make somebody pay. This guy? Nope. Her? Uh-uh. He's heading for the baby stroller. And he just plows over it. Let's go back and take a slower and closer look at the baby carriage being trampled. The horse busts through the railing, nearly levels a spectator, and then takes aim on the stroller. Check this out. The horse actually leaps to get over the carriage, but its rear legs clip the carriage on the way over, sending the stroller and the mother crashing to the ground. Amazingly, the baby and mother escaped without injuries. The horse is looking for new targets. Listen to the advice of the track announcer. Stay as still as you can and don't run. Yeah, right, buddy. Easy for you to say when you're hiding out in your private box. Check out this guy. He's in a panic because he just bet the family farm on this horse to win. Finally, a couple guys in the crowd grab a hold of the reins and slow the horse down. No one was hurt, but the horse had to be treated for a really sore groin. Speaking of groins, you want to know the best way to get 30 stitches to the groin? Take your kid to feed the kangaroos. 
of get stiff. Yeah, for good reason. Bo and his parents were feeding the kangaroos at a national park in Australia when he saw one go totally ninja on his dad. He grabbed hold of me with his uh, two front paws. The rest of his body came up onto my lap and his, and his hind legs were, were kicking away, trying to, I presume, damage me. Again in slow motion. Those hind legs are just shredding Sean's groin. One more time. Sean wanted to whip out his wound. Whoa, that's more than we care to see, buddy. But we did agree to look at his face gash. And if his face looked this bad from one punch, you can only imagine what things look like below the belt. That's an animal striking back with a vengeance. On maximum exposure, the ABCs of the crocodile death spin. And hey, we do taste like chicken. Dude, trust me, elk urine drives the bucks crazy. Oh yeah, we got what you want: sharks, big ones, and big things munching on little things. And if you still don't think animals rule the world. Check out our Max X list of Animals Strike Back. It's lying in wait for you. Maximum exposure. Max X. We got your back because animals are striking back. You're about to see a sight few people have ever lived to tell about. Crocodiles and alligators have a style of killing that's all their own. It's called the death roll. Pay close attention and you'll learn how it's done. These are Nile crocodiles. Some of the most bloodthirsty you'll ever find. They usually kill about 70 people a year. Probably sever the limbs off hundreds more who are lucky enough to survive. These dudes are lethal. You don't even see them coming. They'll sneak up on you and have you for lunch before you have time to scream help. Now here's how they perform their death roll. Step one, they quietly stalk their prey. In this case, it's a video camera attached to a long pole. Step two, they take aim, open their jaws real wide, and attack, burying their razor sharp teeth into its victim. Step three, time for the death roll. The croc starts wildly spinning around in the water, shredding its victim as it drowns them. Now, in case you missed it, here it is again. Stalk. Attack. Roll. Our advice? Don't mess with them. Now you've seen the death roll, here it is in action. It's mating season at an alligator farm, and these two horny gators have the hots for the same gal. Love is in the air. And when love is in the air, that can only mean one thing. Pain ain't far behind. One of the males starts for the water, possibly to get himself some gator loving. When the other grabs him by the leg and does the death roll, Again, and this time, listen closely. The crunching sound you hear, those are bones breaking. Now, before you send us any letters, this is normal behavior, and the alligator's bones will heal, okay? Unfortunately, folks, this happens in a while, and this is nature. And don't send us any letters about this, either. Set to music, it looks like this. Remember, no letters, please. These elephant seals are probably not much different than the guys you may know. The leader of the pack gets all the women. So, what's that mean? A lot of frustrated male elephant seals. 
This guy's only chance of ever doing the deed is to have one of them pick a fight with the leader. And while the leader's off defending himself, the others can start hitting on his harem. Sound like some of the behavior you've seen at bars? Here's the dominant male. Let's call him King. Challenging his manhood is this guy. Let's make up a name for him. Okay, what do you say we call him Marlon Brando? While these two blubbery gladiators slug it out in the surf, word is out. Score! The other males waste no time making their move. Whoa, back off, buddy. Oh, yeah, it's a love fest out there. Ow. King will protect his harem to the death. Marlin and King beat themselves bloody. Meanwhile, it's a mating frenzy on shore. Yeah. Marlin is losing his battle to dethrone King and capture all his females. Down goes Marlin, and King delivers one last blow as a reminder to never mess with him again. King might be bloody and spent, but he's wasting no time letting all the males know that the orgy is over. He's an animal that strikes back. Still to come on Maximum Exposure. A man with a poisonous trouser snake. The scary monster behind the door. A pet lion gets a taste for boy chow. And the Max X personal collar. Single killer whales seek single human female to share life, love, and leg. And sharks. We like them as much as you do. Be afraid. Be very afraid. And check out our Max X list of Animals Strike Back. Remember, channel clippers get eaten on maximum exposure. Check out the vibe. Max X. See this poor guy? There's a monster waiting for him inside that house. Relax for me. Don't, don't be too excited. Now, explain to me what is going on here. They said you found a huge monster in the garage. I don't know what it is, but I mean, I can't... All he knows is that it growls, it hisses, uh -huh. and it's his job to remove it. All right, don't open it now. Show me what door it was. That door there? I don't okay. know what it is. What did you, what did you see? It was just... Well, I said just teeth. Big teeth. I mean, big teeth. Okay. You know, All right. Tell you what, why don't you stand right here, and I'm going to open the cabinet and see what you saw. Oh, God. Well, just relax. Now, did you have any uh, pet food in here that would attract an animal? Yes, we do, because we have a cat. And as a matter of fact, we can find our cat. Okay. And, I, I mean, we don't know what it is. I don't, we All don't right. know what our cat is. It was in here, you saw, yes. and the door was open a little bit? Yeah, the door was open. So you kind of slammed it and ran for your That's life. Right. Okay. That's right. Okay. The family cat is missing. Isabella is terrified. What evil lurks behind that door? And would you open it for a measly 75 bucks? Well, Todd will. That is a huge possum. All right, I'm going to uh, try to grab him and pull him out of your cabinet. Unless he bites. That's right. Todd's going to try to catch this angry marsupial with his hands. Who says there's no heroes for kids to look up to these days? <laughs> yep, so much for possums playing dead. got his monster. Now the question becomes, did the possum eat the cat? It's in a cage. No, the cat was just hiding until it was safe to come out. This old boy, he's not afraid of nothing. Nothing that is except a monster possum that wouldn't play dead.
Hunter Lynn Chestnut knows how to attract deer. And if that don't do it, this bottle of elk urine certainly will. It kind of kills your smell, you know, so you want to get that on you really good, you know. And then, and they can smell your breath, yeah. <laughs> But it, but it didn't really bother me because I, I could think, oh man, this is gonna make good movies. <laughs> you know? Good movies? Heck, this is a great movie. Look at that deer try to stop that smile right off of Lynn's face. I, I throw my hands up around my face and, and I'd be rolling on the ground and trying to protect my face because that's the part you worry about the most, you know. It seems clear that Lynn has already taken his fair share of blows to the head along the way. Lynn's getting the camouflage kicked right out of him. He was hitting me hard. He bruised me all up. But there's a part of him that really seems to be enjoying it. Just how whacked out is this guy? That's his wife behind the lens. And he gave her very specific instructions. He screams at me. He says, I don't care if it kills me. He says, just keep taking the pictures. Lynn finally had all the deer whooping he could stand for one day and dragged his sorry, battered, urine-stained butt and headed for a tree. And I figured he's going to get me right in the butt with the horns. I could feel it before I got to the tree. <laughs> no such luck. And I went back and he never showed up again, so I guess he'd had enough. <laughs> enough of Lynn? Nah, you can never get enough of elk urine, boy. So Lynn, your performance made you a star. What do you think of that? Lord kind of looks after the ignorant, you know. <laughs> hey, been thinking of getting yourself a pet lion? Well, this family in Pakistan has one. You got a lion, nobody breaks into your house. Neighbors come over to play with it, and friends pose for pictures. Because kids just love them. It's a tug-of-war jungle style. The lion has him by one arm. His friends have him by the other. The powerful beast starts to drag him away. But wait, his friends look like they're going to free him. The struggle continues off camera. The boy finally breaks free. There's no long goodbyes here. These kids fly out of that house in slow motion. So you can see what turned this kitty into a kid muncher. Now watch this kid closely. The others are petting a lion, and this kid stumbles and falls onto him. That's when the lion freaks. Now, if you're still thinking about getting your own lion, we can get you a really great deal on this one. This is just one of Thailand's many national pastimes. Throw a couple of poisonous snakes on the ground and try to bite them before they bite you. The crowd loves a winner. They love a loser even more. Here's one. Guess where this guy's about to be bitten. Shoulder, face, head, ear, arm, elbow, ankles, toes, wrist, knees, neck. Nope. That is four feet of slithering trouble. Mr. Snake in my pants tries everything he can to shake it loose. There's not much he can do except wait until the python has had enough of him and let's go. Here's that attack in slow motion. The snake takes aim and it's feeding time. It's nasty when a snake strikes back. Next up on Maximum Exposure. My, what great big teeth you have. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a trainer by her toe. Beef, my, fo, fum. I smell the blood of... Ah, who cares? I'm eating it. If you're still hungry, don't miss the Max X list of Animals Strike Back. Max X, we're hitting it hard. Animals strike back on maximum exposure. Our motto is, you can never get enough great white sharks. This creature is so much fun to watch. They ought to just create the great white shark cable channel. 
Now tell me you'd ever get tired of seeing this. Or this. Or this. Heck, you can just set this stuff to music and let it play. Some guys actually get in the water to film these killers. Oh yeah, they're shark experts. This guy's filming the shark when the shark decides it wants a piece of him. Whoa, that was close. Well, let's go underwater to see the attack from the expert's point of view. Let's see that again in slow motion. And watch how close this guy comes to getting his head munched. How rare is this footage? Let's just say that if you ever run into a great white, this will be the last thing you ever see on Earth. If that ain't enough to scare you out of the water, this will. That's a seal sunning himself and relaxing in the water. And that's a seal being eaten by a great white shark. Again. Seal relaxing. Seal being devoured. The ultimate killing machine moves on. This ain't a great show for sea lions either. These shots come all the way from Patagonia, South America. The hunting grounds of the orca whale. And this is its meal, the sea lion. And when they get one, they really make it pay. Eight tons of seething terror storms the beach, snares its prey, and thrashes it to death before eating it. Nature ain't always pretty. In fact, examining the food chain can get downright nasty. Orcas eat about three sea lions a day. At a couple of hundred pounds apiece, that's like chowing down a truckload of Big Macs. The killing spree goes on for nearly two months. They're amazingly good hunters. This is some extremely rare footage. Here they are hunting in a pack. One, two, three orcas attack. And there's no place for the sea lion to go, except into the mouth of one of the whales. But not every attack is a kill. Most of the time, the sea lion gets away. Orcas are successful in only about 1 in 30 attacks. This sea lion has survived. Well, for today. Okay, so you're sitting there saying, Man, you showed us a lot of mean animals attacking, but not a single tiger. Well, here you go. The place? Out of Africa Wildlife Park in Arizona. The tiger? a 600-pound brown Benbow. The victim, Carol Happ, an announcer in the cage. Pay close attention. Carol certainly wasn't. But when I get wound up in a spider, Let's slow it down and zoom in. The tiger flies across the pan and flattens Carol. Amazingly, she comes through without a single scratch. It's a good thing she wasn't hungry. Uh, the tiger, that is. Carol got out of there without a single body piercing or flesh wound. Hey, all you SeaWorld and Chamu fans. Here's a special performance from everyone's favorite killer whale. This is one of Shamu's trainers enjoying a ride on his back. Chances are, Shamu's enjoying it too. Well, it's time to end this session. The trainer reaches for her whistle and blows it, which is the signal for Shamu to stop. Not today. The killer in Shamu comes out. He starts thrashing around and takes the woman down. A scuba diver tries to save her. No good. The four-ton whale throws him away and takes off with the girl. Someone tries to use a pole to save her, but she can't grab it. She's fighting for her life and being tossed around like a toy. Again, the safety pole. Again, it's ripped from her hands. 
Now it's a battle of survival. She's finally pulled out of the water, but the whale still has her leg. Shamu's got her and he ain't letting go. One bite and the leg is gone. It's a standoff. Everyone's afraid to make a move. Finally, a trainer wedges a pole into Shamu's powerful jaws and pries her leg loose. She's lucky not only to have her leg, but her life. 25 stitches close the wounds. Amazingly, the trainer wasn't scared off by the attack. It wasn't long before she was back in the tank riding Shamu. You see, she knows how to deal with it when an animal strikes back. Still on tap, maximum exposure. Our max X list of Animal Strike Back. It's Ape Law on Maximum Exposure. Hey, we're back. And if you scare easy, then cover your eyes. Because this is the Max X list. The all-time meanest animal attacks. Number three. Psycho Chimp. This island in Uganda, Africa, is home to a colony of chimps who have serious behavior problems. You couldn't go on the island. They would probably beat you to a pulp, maybe kill you. Remember, human island, safe. Chimp island, not safe. John McLaughlin and his assistant Maori have been working with these chimps for two years. They're considered friends of the chimps. These chimps really look thrilled to see them. Oh, this is bad. I don't like this. Yeah, it's bad, all right. That should have been their hint to leave. But not John. He wants to spend some time with his buddies. You know, pick some flies off them. The herd splits, and John grunts to them in chimp. Well, something must have got lost in the translation. It's attack of the psycho chimp. <laughs> Here it is again. John barely escapes with his life. The chimp mauled his face, nearly ripped off his ear, and mangled his fingers. Hey, we warned you. Human island, safe. Chimp island, not safe. Number two on the Max X list of animal mayhem. Slither. A number of goats have been going missing recently, and approximately once or twice every year, the odd occasional human victim. Snake hunter Duncan McRae has gathered a posse to search for a 22-foot python in a place known as the Cave of Death. Their plan? Take this most wanted killer alive. They search for clues. This bone looks like a human bone to me. They push on. This, I would say, is uh, relatively fresh. Hours of searching turn up nothing but bats, a human bone, and a bunch of snake feces. Um, let's get out of here, man. Yeah, we've done it, man. The killer has eluded them. Whoa! There's what? a huge snake! Hold on, get Whoa! The snake's coming into the cave. Oh As they reach the entrance, there's the snake. Wow. Oh, God! The python tries to flee. But the snake hunters grab the monster with their bare hands. Not a great idea. One of the hunters grabs the snake's hat. Good move. But pythons kill by strangling the prey with their powerful bodies. Hey, it's got him. It's got Duncan, you guys. 
And this one has Duncan in a death grip. Oh Try and pull it off. Help. Pull it off. Could he become this man-eater's next victim? Duncan narrowly escapes. Are you all right? Keep it straight, straight. Just keep it straight the whole time. All right, as many hands on that as Amazingly, after all that, Duncan decided to release the killer python. Probably the honorable thing to do. To tell your travel agent to cancel your reservations at the Cave of Death in Sulawesi, Indonesia. And the number one meanest animal attack on the X list. A family favorite. Berserk Polish Bear. You know, it's a universal fact. Kids and animals pull in great television ratings. Even producers in Warsaw, Poland know that. So they try to juice the ratings by booking a half-ton brown bear from the Polish circus to appear on a morning talk show. Does this get any cuter? One of the producers of the show decides she wants her picture taken with the bear. Smile. Say mauling. The circus manager and trainer struggle to save the producer from the clutches of the angry bear. They free her. But then the bear turns his wrath on the circus manager. Like we said earlier, animals pull in high ratings, and TV programming doesn't get any better than this. The trainer finally pries the crazed bear off the manager. Here's a slow motion look at the attack on the producer. She could not be happier about having booked the bear on her show. But that smile doesn't last long. Now the second attack. The circus manager becomes the target of the bear's rage. They notice the band leader holding the baton. The guy never makes a move to help. Animals strike back has claimed its final victim. And the Polish circus bear has television star written all over him. Maximum exposure. We're out. From the high rent district to a back alley downtown, they never know where the next radio call will take them. Buckle up for real life action on To Serve and Protect, next here on KVOS. <laughs>